Now, <laughs> as if the last few days and videos haven't been monumental enough, uh, this is a little project that I've been keeping quiet for the past few weeks because, well, quite frankly, I didn't believe it had happened. It sounded too good to be true. But when you collect a new car, typically they come from the dealership and the garage and you go down and it is a lovely collection experience. But then you drive it out and you realize you're in a city or just some normal, you know, public roads and you can't really experience what that car is all about. But what if, what if you were told that you could have that car delivered anywhere in Europe of your choosing so the first time you drive it you would absolutely maximize the potential and enjoyment of that car yeah <laughs> i'm sure you see what's happening here so here we are in tuscany italy in the wine regions up in the hills and as i'm sure you've guessed by the title of this video we are here taking delivery of a brand new 991 <laughs> gt3 rs yeah Let's do this. Another car. What? What is going on? Not only that, we're in the heart of Italy. We're in Tuscany, where there is stunning driving roads, and we're at a brand new 991 GT3 RS. Now, the first thing you're probably wondering is why have you got Trading 212 stickers all over it? Well, let's not beat around the bush. Yes, I have partnered with Trading 212. Ultimately, this channel is about cars, and Trading 212 are here to support us gaining more content. We're gonna be doing track days, we're gonna be doing road trips, we're gonna be comparing this car with other cars. But yeah, ultimately, we've got a partner on board which is gonna support what I love bringing to you guys and open up more doors so I can bring you more great content. But anyway, we're here to talk cars and we're in a brand new GT3 RS. We're in Tuscany, Italy, in the wine region, known for the perfect grape and the perfect road. And we are actually on one of the legs of the famous Millimilia. So we just couldn't have picked a better time and place. It's November, the sun is shining. Brand new 991 GT3 RS. Let's do it. So here we are at our first lunch stop. If you're wondering why we decided to come to Tuscany, just check a look at the view behind me. It is just stunning. Look at this, it's so rich with color. Beautiful autumnal vineyards. Yeah. I mean, in terms of a backdrop, a backdrop to what I'm doing right now. I mean, again, we have rich along with us. Uh, if you don't subscribe to my channel normally, uh, every now and again my friend and photographer Rich joins us uh, on these these trips to get great uh, photos and content and backdrops for him right now. Look, he's there, look. What do you reckon, man? Look at what he's looking at right, <laughs> right now. We've got the RS in between two beautiful buildings and the backdrop again is that iridescent autumnal vineyard and look at the arse on the rs it's so wide of course the rs is running the uh wide body from the turbo i mean spending a lot of time with my gt3 the differences stand out quite a lot actually these fantastic arch vents 
The misconception with these is that it's for either for styling or aerodynamics or downforce. Actually, it's to release air pressure <laughs> from between the tire and the inner arch. Uh, Porsche know, Porsche know how to do a ride height. This is a factory ride height. Honest to God, I could just fit a finger in there. That is a ride height, and that's come fresh from factory. But yeah, these um, these vents release air pressure from out of them because with there not being much space for air to clear, when you're going very fast, it actually causes lift. So the, uh, yeah, the air goes, shoo, exits out of there and keeps that nose nice and flat. to the wine cellars of this beautiful place. We find out because we just went in to, to buy some wine and the uh, ultra helpful lady here has just packed us a bottle of wine that we've just bought that her granddad made, which is absolutely incredible. But this is uh, the current, current uh, place, but look at this. Wow. And do you know how many Bottles of wine are in here. Around forty-five thousand. Forty-five thousand. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> this is what forty-five thousand bottles of wine looks like. <laughs> and the oldest bottle here is from nineteen sixty. Yes, here. There's a bottle in here from nineteen sixty. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, it's getting much cooler and darker in here. Oh, yeah, there's a 60, 62 here. Here it is. Yeah, 1960. 1960. Okay, it's so dark in here that I decided to get my torch on from my phone, but look at the... So these have been here since, as you can see, 1960. This uh, is pretty special stuff. Look how old they are. Look at all of the, the mold and dust that's accumulated on these. And this is what's phenomenal about this region. You can be driving along, you can just walk into a place like this and it's packed full of stunning history. How amazing is that? 1980, I might find a bottle from 86 and buy that because that's when I was born. So it'll make it 30 years old. And that's 70, and that's 70s there. Do you have a bottle from 86? If it's not here, probably it's in the private cellar of my grandfather. Okay. Because when 80. we have just a few bottles of one year, we made the private cellar. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, this is all 81. You made a lot in 81, yeah. huh? Yeah, <laughs> 83. 83 a lot too? Yeah. Wow. 85. Not sure if we have a 6 here. God, 88? 85? Oh, we're short on 86. <laughs> Maybe it was really Maybe, yeah, 86, <laughs> uh, take it from me, was the best year ever. <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, what a fantastic place. And we literally just saw a sign pulled in for some sandwiches. And this is why Italy's so fantastic. You get to see great places like this, meet amazing people like this. Thank you. And uh, yeah, anyway, speaking of amazing, it's time to get back to that GT3 RS. All right. Lunch stop finished. Let's get down to the whole point of this fantastic car, and that's what does it drive like? I've only driven it really a short distance, and that's mostly because I was hungry and dying for coffee. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just swung into the first place I saw, which transpired to be a fantastic Italian beauty spot. Anyway, enough vino. Let's check out what this car is all about. Right. Now, of course, this is basically a brand new car, so right now I won't be spanking it for all it's worth. But, <laughs> we're definitely gonna be getting a good idea of what this thing feels like, sounds like. Now, of course, it's not a 
a fair direct comparison about sound with my GT3 because that has the uh, Sharkworks exhaust upgrade. But I am actually surprised that it does sound better than the stock GT3 and I thought that car sounded fantastic. But this, this is pretty special. I guess there's other things which contribute and, and help that and that's the fact that the rear window is actually other specs. It's not glass of course, that's for weight saving. But it just helps to resonate all of the ambient sounds. It just fills that cab with the engine being right there. I'm still a little bit taken back that this is actually happening. Uh, look, I mean, we're currently winding our way up the hills of Tuscany in a brand new GT3 RS. It doesn't get much better. Right, let's see what this feels like in second. This doesn't have an upgraded exhaust on it. That's just, that's just how it sounds. <laughs> wow, that's, yeah, that's special. One of the things that I'm absolutely taken with, it's just how, listen to the, listen to the gearbox change on this, right? It's a tone change. It doesn't so much as change gear, it's just there's a different sound change. Honestly, I mean, I thought the GT3 gearbox was the fastest, oh my God, was the fastest, most seamless, smoothest gearbox that I'd driven. This thing, I, I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how they've done it. It is unbelievably fast. It is, when you hear the word seamless shift, this is it. This is an actual seamless shift. I'm impressed by how great it is and how seamless it is. But do you know what I do like from the GT3 is that when you're up it, when you're on full chat and you shift, there is this sort of boof when you change and there is this reaffirming thud that you get back from it. This so far, and I haven't driven it yet in anger, but so far I'm going to say that the gearbox is potentially too good if there is such a thing it's too seamless yeah mad now of course we've got the wide body on this this is basically a 911 turbo body hence the air ducts on the side and hence why it looks like a race car for the road from the back so much stance so much squat but what that gives you a wider front and rear axle and by god does it turn in <laughs> what on earth god porsche build a car these boys build a car <laughs> the rev range is ridiculous oh there's so much grip lateral grip the magic happened in the GT3 was in those last 500 RPM. However, this is a more substantial engine. So by the time you get up to eight and a half in this, I honestly don't miss that last 500. And I really thought that I, I would because it is such a significant feature of the GT3. But it, it still revs and revs and revs for days. And by the time you get to eight and a half, you're considering should I have shifted earlier anyway? The front end on this is savage. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's playful too. It's playful. And when they step out, you know, with this rear wheel stick. 
steering it just feels like a shorter wheelbase than it actually is They also run a trading rally, which is where the theme of cars comes in. It's a competition amongst traders on their platform, and yeah, it's just a great way of both learning and getting involved in trading. Okay, now we arrive at the hotel car park. And thankfully, it actually has a car park, but apparently I'm supposed to bring this, bring a button here. Yup. What? This is steep. Really steep. Okay, the, the ABS kicking in. At least it's spacious though. The amount of car parks you get to that are so tiny. Wee! Automatic light. <laughs> first day, first day with the GT3 RS. Look at it. Look how cool that is. It's got such a great stance. And now is the obligatory car park sign off that always happens when you're on a road trip. Finally arrived in Florence at our hotel. Day one with the RS has been nothing short of absolutely spectacular. That is the way to collect a car. Any car from now on, forget the dealership, send it to the Alps. It's just the only way. I mean, these cars were designed for that type of thing. There's been this massive build up to you getting a car and then you drive it out onto the M6 and everything's a bit slow. So yeah, the best, the definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, has today been the best car collection exercise. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.